Dormouse is a thriller that is bursting with style and it's definitely not quiet like a mouse. Hey everyone, this is David Stark from Watcher Pass. Today I'm talking to you about Dormouse, which came to theaters and on demand on January 13th, 2023. I am a little behind. I just finished it, but wow, is it a good film? Uh, my hot take is I think you should watch it. It is just a wonderfully well done thriller with a really colorful noir style. I know that kind of is counterintuitive, but you kind of have to see it to really understand. And it also just has this great sense of style throughout. Uh, so I'm going to tell you a little about the film, a few things I liked, a few things I didn't like, and go into the ending. So as you can imagine, there will be spoilers in the ending section. I will let you know when that happens. I will let you know when I get to the ending. Uh, you should be fine up until then. I'll just kind of speak vaguely. But when I get to the ending, if you don't want to know what happens, I will turn it off. So... In Dormouse, you have Mouse, played by Haley Law, who is a dancer at this burlesque club set up by Mama. And um, pretty much every character in this film has some sort of, like, nickname. Uh, so you have Mama, you have Mouse, you have Ugly, uh, you have other characters that have different nicknames. So you just kind of have to get used to it for this. But, so Mouse is a dancer at this club, and what happens is some of the dancers go missing uh, just randomly. And that leads Mouse to go down this rabbit hole, or I guess in this case, mouse hole, to try to figure out what's happening and kind of exact justice. She is a very kind of punk character. She wants kind of to mete out justice. She wants to fight the establishment. And going down uh, in this investigation causes her to have to do just that. So things I liked about this film, the first is just the overall style. So this film has a kind of noir feel to it, but it is colorful. It's not like super bright, right? Like it is, it has muted colors, but you do have a very nice color palette in this kind of what we, you would traditionally expect to be a black and white type of film. It's kind of like this, right? Like a black shirt, a little bit of color in the background just to kind of make things pop. Uh, it is something that is really interesting to watch. And it's something that really is interesting to see. And I also love how everything in this film kind of goes back to this comic idea. So Mouse, in addition to being a dancer and performer at this club, is also a comic book artist. And so a lot of the film has comic book type uh, cues in it. So you've got, you have the film broken up into various chapters but they call each chapter an issue and so that's a nice little callback there and the film also has comic aspects throughout like during parts of the film there will be animations like comic style animations to help tell the story and really kind of drive that feel home and i love those and what i really also liked is that so sometimes you'll have a film and i think die in a gunfight had this it has a nice style and it had this really great kind of comic opening that told some of the story but then after the opening was just done there was no other callbacks to that and what i liked about dormouse is that you had a, a good kind of comic start and then the comic style the comic animation would come up in scenes throughout and, and they tended also to be scenes that would be difficult for an indie film to film some expensive or tough to coordinate scenes so i really like that i thought it was a very smart way to kind of have this style throughout but also to kind of manage an indie budget so i really loved it uh the film overall is just dripping with style and i definitely think that was my favorite thing about this movie the second thing i love are the characters you know in any good kind of thriller detective ish kind of film you need to have really good characters and this film has a nice set of unconventional characters that you really kind of get to know most of the characters you get to know are mouse and ugly because they're the two kind of main characters but there are a bunch of other individuals that come into the orbit in this investigation that you get to meet each of them is very different uh very kind of unique and quirky and altogether it makes this film a much more enjoyable experience and the third thing i really liked is just the production values of the film like i said uh the film is an indie but i think they made really smart choices to make this feel like a really kind of high quality project you don't really ever really feel like anything is cut because of the indie nature and one thing i mentioned is that they seem to have used these comic style scenes where it might be an expensive or difficult shot to make and it just kind of really makes those scenes both pop and also means that they come together really well uh and the film just is filled with this they have really great costumes they have a really great like i said sense of style really great sets everything about this film feels like a well done movie and even though it is indie like you can definitely tell it's an indie film it doesn't ever feel like that was a hindrance to this movie and the last thing i really love is the music like i said mouse is a very punk character she is against the system she's fighting the power and the soundtrack fits that perfectly. There is a lot of punk music throughout this film, and it really kind of helps to get your adrenaline going when you need to, and also just sell the style, sell the overall 
feel of this movie. So things I didn't love as much, really there isn't much. The only the only thing is I love these comic scenes. I wish that there were more. There is one scene later on that would have been kind of fitting in the style of of when these comic book type scenes came in. And it didn't. They, they, they chose to film that. My guess is because it was a pivotal scene, they wanted to film it. But that was one where I was like, oh, this would be perfect for that, that comic style to pop in, and it didn't show up. I really wish that they were they were used more throughout. But like I said, they are used throughout, which is a great thing. It's, it really kind of helps to sell the style. So I'm just kind of asking for more of the things I liked, which is always a good sign in a, in a movie. So going into the ending, and again, this is where the spoilers will happen. If you don't want to know what happens in this film, and you probably don't, this, this is an investigation type movie. So you want to kind of go with the characters and figure out what happens. And I would turn this off now. But like I said, Mouse is kind of investigating... The disappearance of a few of the girls who are working at this club. The two main ones are Doe Eyes and Riz. And Mouse is kind of doing this with the help of her friend Ugly. Ugly is someone that just kind of is at the club. He is a gentleman. He is a very interesting character. I liked him a lot. He has this kind of smooth, confident style about him. Um, and, and Mouse and him make a really good pair for this investigation. So together they are investigating what happened to both Riz and Doe Eyes. Now, they do find Riz. Unfortunately, uh, Riz is dead they find riz's body well someone finds riz's body and the person that gets kind of pinned with the crime mouse doesn't believe that they actually did it she thinks that they're just kind of like wiping their hands and trying to cover it up she thinks he's a fall guy so they both keep digging and eventually they unravel some strings and, and kind of do some favors for people and figure out that Everything is tied to this underground character called the Dame. And you've never met her before. Um, she's this kind of like powerful underground king pin, queen pin, I guess would be the, the word here. And she is controlling, uh, she is, I guess, snatching girls off the street. And Mouse finds out that they're being kind of auctioned at these parties or very kind of exclusive parties, very exclusive sex parties. And she decides that she has to kind of infiltrate this to go help Doe Eyes before it's too late. Riz was already killed and uh, she fears that Doe Eyes is next. So Mouse decides to get herself captured and she kind of tries and it doesn't really work out for her. But then when she's kind of least expecting it, she gets kidnapped by the dame and brought into this kind of establishment. So you're like, okay, you got what you wanted. You got into this place. You, she sees Doe Eyes, but now she's kind of stuck in this very, very bad situation where she is, uh, you know, kind of shackled and under a very watchful eye. She's like, what is going to happen? Uh, she goes along with all the other girls that are here. There's a, there's a number of girls here to the auction, this event where people in these really creepy masks, uh, like just, they're not like overtly creepy, but they're creepy in how just kind of unsettling they look um they're just normal just like people masks but but they all look the same everyone's wearing the same one i think it's just like a generic male face with like black hair and so during this auction each girl is brought up and people bid on them and eventually mouse is bid on she's brought back to the room and you find out when the person takes off the mask that it's actually one of her kind of frenemies that she had interacted with before this this drug dealer who had looked out for her before she so she hatched this whole plan to to get captured and then get bought by this person so that she could now free doe eyes she she takes his gun uh when the guard comes in she shoots the guard gets doe eyes runs out crashes through a window and, and this is a scene where they do the comic book style which i love you know you get them both running they crash through a window they dive onto the pavement again it'd be a very very difficult scene to do outside of uh, the comic style. So I thought it was a great kind of time to put it in. It also makes it exciting and also a great way to kind of like stretch the empty budget. So Mouse ultimately escapes with Doe Eyes. So now we find out what happened to Doe Eyes and ultimately what happened to Riz. So, so Doe Eyes was just kidnapped. She was supposed to go to work. She couldn't, you know, get the energy up. And then she was kidnapped that day. Riz arrived a few days later and she, Doe Eyes was a little bit more docile. Riz fought back and apparently... That was uh, actually seen as favorable. Some some of the clients really liked that. And so she would be bought by kind of the rougher clients. And eventually that led to her, uh, you know, being roughed up and being killed. Doe Eyes did not do that. She was able to survive, although she still had a terrible experience. So Mouse tells Doe Eyes to just get out, like leave town, never come back. Um, and Mouse starts kind of formulating her final plan. But before that happens, 
she gets kidnapped by the dame again. So dame sits her down and you're like, okay, this is where Mouse is going to get killed. But they, the dame early on says, I have no intention of killing you. And she offers Mouse two tickets to somewhere far away for her and Ugly. Um, and Mouse is kind of confused. But the dame says she's not going to kill Mouse because in many ways they are similar. The dame also says, you know, if you don't take this up and if you do have, you do come for me, she will peel the skin off of Ugly's face, which is a very, very specific threat and also probably a very painful one. Mouse finally gets to ask a question and she says, you know, who sold you Riz and Doe Eyes? And the dame leans over and says, I think you know the answer to that question, which I kind of suspected at the start uh, who it was, but, you know, it was nice to kind of like have it come full circle. Then, So the next scene is at the burlesque bar. Uh, the music is blaring. It is a great kind of stylish sh scene. Mouse gets in and just tells everyone to leave. Uh, so everyone gets out. Mama is in the back room. Um, she turns off the light and is knocked out. So Mama wakes up, handcuffed to the stage, and Mouse starts interrogating her. And she just basically says, how long, Mama? And Mama looks at her. She looks upset. She says, you wouldn't understand. The bar had been losing money for years. She had this, and she had seen lots of girls go down the path. Essentially, she says her choice was either to lose the bar and all the girls that were under employment would, you know, go to the streets and then eventually end up at the dame's house or sell a few of the girls to keep the bar going and kind of keep the other girls safe and secure. Reasonable? I don't know, but definitely not to Mouse. Mouse does not like this. Mouse does not like this approach. And Mouse especially doesn't like Mama for this because Mama pretended to be, you know, their protector, their savior, and ended up kind of betraying them. So Mouse meets out the justice that Mouse expects and, uh, you know, she pulls the gun on Mama. Mama looks resigned to her fate and Mouse turns the gun on Mama and caps her in the face. And that, this is a scene that I kind of wish was in the comic book style. This would have fit with the other scenes where they jumped into the comic style, but I do understand why they would have filmed this. It's kind of a pivotal scene. But again, this is one I wish they had done in the comic book style. Just kind of fit the overall time that it comes in. Now, Mouse tells Ugly to leave because she has unfinished business and Ugly gets upset with her. Ugly has been kind of by her side the entire time and he clearly has feelings for Mouse. Mouse has never really kind of acknowledged them. But uh, Ugly essentially says, you know, he's not going to leave her. Um, they have a moment. They hold hands. Mouse says, okay, you know, meet me at the train station at midnight, which I don't know if Ugly's being naive. It's pretty clear that Mouse wasn't going to meet him. But he goes. He goes, he leaves for the train tracks, and Mouse, in her last little bit of sadness and betrayal, does not meet him up at the train tracks. She finishes a comic that she'd been working on that kind of was telling this overall story. She she had been drawing this comic that was telling the story of what was going on. She finishes it with Ugly kind of at the train station by himself, and then she finishes her own story. We are next at the Dames Club, but it is more of a big gathering it looks like it's kind of a more formal in the light type of setting it's not this kind of like secret meeting where the girls are auctioning off this looks like more just a general party and the dame is up there and mouse just kind of like walks in with a gun pulls the trigger blood splatters on mouse's face and the final line uh is she says that she'd rather die with the sheep than eat with the wolves so that is mouse kind of imposing her justice, finishing the story. Now, I don't really know if this is going to get her what she wants because the dame has a full organization. I feel like someone is just going to kind of come in and take over that spot. But who knows? Uh, at least Mouse's story has come full circle. And that is Dormouse. Like I said, it's a really good film. It was a really, really nice, refreshing surprise. I didn't really know what to expect, and I loved the film through and through. So that is Dormouse. It's in theaters and on demand on January 13th, 2023, so you can check it out in theaters or from the comfort of your own home. I definitely think you should, and thanks so much for watching. If you liked this review, please like and subscribe to this channel. It helps me out a lot. Make sure all my new content goes straight to you. Thank you.